Good morning, everyone. Today I'm presenting the case conference of a 24-year-old female who is unmarried, uh, Hindu by religion, living in a nuclear family, has completed her BSc in Zoology, Botany, Chemistry, and currently pursuing pharmacy from uh, uh, Rudra Praya. She, belong, uh, she is a resident of Gauchar Chamoli and belongs to middle class social economic status according to the modified Kukuswami scale. She was admitted to the hospital on the 20th of December 2022. The informants uh, were her mother, who is a 50 year old female, a housewife. She has studied till class 12 and has been living with the patient throughout the course of the years and the program herself. The history given is clear, consistent, coherent. It is given in a chronological uh, order, corroborated amongst both the informants. History is reliable, but inadequate in terms of treatment history. The chief complaints are as follows. Decreased social interaction, self-muttering, self-smiling, suspiciousness for two years. Instance of, instances of self-harm six months back and 20 days ago. Hearing voices not heard by others since six months and aggressive and abusive behavior again since six months. The onset, the complaints <laughs> are insidious in onset. The course is progressively deteriorating and the duration is two years. The predisposing factors are a history suggestive of harmful pattern of alcohol intake in father, history suggestive of trans and possession in mother, and history suggestive of query psychosis in great grandmother. The perpetuating factors are a lack of cordial relationship with father and a lack of compliance to treatment. The precipitating factors, however, could not be elicited in this case. Coming to the history of presenting illness, the patient was apparently well two years back when she returned home after giving her finals of BSc from Srinagar. It was during this time that she demanded to sleep by herself in her room, unlike before, wherein she would sleep with her mother. After getting a room to herself, she subsequently started spending all of her time closed off in the room. She would rarely come out of the room even and even eat her meals in that room. She would participate in the household chores. However, her mother noticed that it was no longer with the same kind of enthusiasm. She would take hours to complete the mopping of the house, which would initially have taken her about a few minutes. Subsequently, she grew even more reluctant to participate in the house and would stay in her room engrossed in her phone. Furthermore, her mother noticed that she would often be smiling and muttering to herself when using her phone. After initially ignoring this, her mother now noticed that the patient even lay awake all throughout the night. And now there were instances of smiling and muttering to self, which lasted initially for a few minutes a day and then now grew to a few hours lasting throughout the day. Her mother inquired about the same to which she would reply curtly and never give any answer. However, on one such day, following a conversation amongst her parents about her increased preoccupation with her phone, the patient got aggressive and said that she is my and I can't live and hurriedly started collecting her clothes, ready to leave her house, saying that I am going to meet her. Her parents, however, convinced her to stay the night and said that they would take her to the aforementioned person the next morning. But puzzled and with no prior information about any such thing, they calmly asked her about the same, the boy in question the next day, and they eventually found out that she was referring to a dentist whom she met in Srinagar following a routine dental, che uh, dental checkup. Her parents also found out that she had not actually spoken to the boy in question after the dental appointment as no text messages or phone call had been exchanged between the two of them. But since then, she had started thinking of him as her husband. And she also thought that if she would think about him hard and long enough, he would be able to communicate with her. But after persistent efforts of her mother and brother, she accepted that all of these stories were untrue. And subsequently, she was made to join a computer course in the village itself. Since the computer center was roughly two kilometers away from her house, she would often walk to the center alone wherein she started getting suspicious that she was being followed. She would have to call her mother midway to escort her home in the evening as she would be fearful that an evil spirit might possess her. She also started getting fearful that a rock might fall on her, crushing her entirely. Uh, and uh, therefore, she further avoided leaving her house. She subsequently had to be withdrawn from the class as she would get reluctant to leave the house completely. 
but after this she joined a pharmacy course in rudraprayag now in one instance when she came home for a little break from her college in rudraprayag her mother went out working in the field the proband picked up a bottle of phenyl kept in the house and drank a lid full of it she subsequently vomited several times sorry she was subsequently made to vomit several times and therefore was not taken to any hospital as told by the mother she reported to her mother that she felt helpless and that it was an impulsive act and was having remorse for her action following these instances she was taken to a nearby health practitioner who performed an alleged narco analysis on her and she then revealed that of late she has been hearing voices not heard by others when she is alone in her room or even when sitting with her family members the voices are those of both a man and a woman and she hears uh, them distinctly these voices talk to her about god and how she is doing a good job by praying every day out of all of these voices she predominantly hears the voice of a dhirendra kumar a motivational speaker slash priest living in madhya pradesh she initially started following his videos on youtube and then reported of hearing his voice even when not watching this with this video wherein he motivates her to pray to god and has also promised to marry her one day she further reported of being able to hold full conversations with the aforementioned dhirendra kumar wherein she plans her marriage with him and also she idolizes as a result she is unable to concentrate on her studies and only concentrates on talking to him after this session there was also an increase in discord between the proband and her father and subsequently following a brief stint of abstinence from alcohol her father again started his alcohol consumption following the increased discordance there were also complaints of uh, aggressive and abusive behavior wherein the patient would get physically and verbally abusive with her family members she refused to go back to her college and as a result citing low scores and poor attendance she was held back in a few subjects there were also increased instances of physical altercations with the family members subsequently she was taken to a mental health practitioner and was started on medications but the patient soon discontinued the treatment on her own accord also after coming back from this hospital the patient started reporting that the reason her parents took her to this hospital was so that they could transplant her heart into her maternal sister and the medications given to her were for this reason at own furthermore she reported that her maternal side of the family was in on it and they were all trying to get her heart transplanted into her younger sister Seven days prior to her admission, the proband poured kerosene all over herself and lit a matchstick. Her neck and left arm caught fire, but since her mother was nearby, she extingu- extinguished the fire with a blanket and water, and she was uh, hurriedly taken to a nearby primary healthcare center. When asked about why she did this, <coughs> why did she do this? She reported that my problems were very heavy. I was very heavy. I was very heavy. I was very heavy. I was very heavy. जब मैं बिल्कुल अकेला महसूस करती हूँ दिस्टेंटिव हिस्ट्री देर इज नो हिस्ट्री सजेस्टिव ऑफ एनी स्पेसिफिक डेवेलपमेंटल डिसऑर्डर ऑफ स्पीच नो हिस्ट्री सजेस्टिव ऑफ एनी मोटर एंड कोर्डिनेशन नो हिस्ट्री सजेस्टिव ऑफ एनी रेकलेस बिहेवियर एंड रीचिंग ऑफ फोन no history of thoughts being introduced into or taken away from mind by an external agency against the will own thoughts being heard aloud or being known to others against the will no history suggestive of breaks or interpolations in the train of thought no history suggestive of catatonic behavior such as excitement posturing waxy flexibility negativism mutism stupor <coughs> no history of sustained over cheerfulness over religiosity over familiarity big planning or over grooming no history of any compulsive acts no history of eating disorder no history of head injury loss of consciousness abnormal body movements associated with incontinence stung by frothing from mouth uproaring of eyeballs memory impairment spells injury blurring of vision or double vision no history of any vomiting or unexplained weight loss no history of any substance abuse
Now the treatment history, uh, there is inadequacy in the treatment history as her treatment was initially started in the month of June 2022, wherein she was started on tablet Olanza. Was taken to a maximum of 12.5 milligrams in, uh, in the lighter doses. This, however, was continued only till July 2022. There was a minimal response citing uh, poor compliance. The compliance was poor and the side effects were none. Olanzapine was again started on the 20th of December after her uh, admission and uh, this, uh, this was continued till the 3rd of January. This was uh, in the hospital. It was, uh, it was taken up to 15 milligrams and uh, citing minimal improvement, this was also discontinued after the third. And the compliance, however, in the hospital was good. Uh, then in the hospital, uh, we have no further treatment records of uh, or previous records. We have only the hospital records. On the 24th of December, she was started on close up in 25 milligrams. It was taken to a maximum of 100 milligrams. And uh, this is being continued till date. There was adequate response. However, constipation was noticed. Uh, then. A long-acting injectable olanzapine was also given on the 24th of December, uh, 210 milligrams. The next dose is scheduled to be given on 14th of January. The, the only uh, side effect that she told was the pain at the site of infection uh, injection. Then tablet lithium was also started on the 20th of December, and it was continued till the 31st of December. Uh, maximum dose was 300 milligrams in, divided, in two divided doses. Uh, the, there was adequate response, the compliance was good, and there were no side effects. However, uh, lithium was uh, stopped owing to that this was not really a compulsive act, and it was due to the uh, auditory hallucinations that she had to take this test. So lithium was eventually stopped. Then uh, tablet trihexy, a combination of tablet trihexyphenidin and trifluperazine, which is not being shown here, was started on the 3rd of January. This is also being continued till date. Trihexyphenidyl dose is 2 milligrams and trifluperazine dose is 5 milligrams. Uh, currently, since uh, the patient was discharged on the 4th and she was started this on the 3rd, so we cannot respond on the, uh, we cannot say anything about the adequate response as of yet. Apart from that, she was also given uh, a combination of amoxicillin and clavulinic acid for sepsis and uh, Zerodol P containing uh, acyclofenac and paracetamol along with uh, pantoclozole and a powder lactifol. All of these were started in the hospital and are being continued till date, except for uh, tablet, the antibiotics. Now the past history, the patient reported of complaints of uh, suggestive of blasphemy uh, since when she was in eighth standard and continued up until she was in uh, BSC in uh, Srinagar. These ob the obsessive thoughts were intrusive and involuntary and no other past significant medical or surgical history could be. Work lessons. Family history. Uh, she is first in order out of uh, two siblings. And uh, as you can see, her father is 56 years old and mother is 50 years old. Uh, there was demise of both of her grandparents when the father was six months old. Uh, uh, grandfather passed from uh, falling from height and the mother subsequently uh, died following the passing of her husband. Then the father has grown up with her uh, great grandmother as previously mentioned. Now she's first in order out of two siblings off of a non-consanguinous marriage. She lives in a nuclear family with her parents and sibling in a rural area. History suggestive of uh, psychosis in great grandmother. History suggestive of harmful pattern of alcohol intake in father. History suggestive of trans and possession in mother. The patient has a cordial relationship with her mother and brother, but not her father. The uh, father is the economic head of the family. Mother, however, is the emotional head of the family. And patient is closest to her mother since childhood. The family, except for the father, is supportive towards the patient and has sympathy towards her illness. 
and understands the importance of regular follow up and compliance. Birth history. She was a full term vaginal delivery home birth assist assisted by an ANM. She cried immediately after birth. There were no complications perinatally. Birth weight was about three kgs. There is no history of any fever, sinosis, prolonged jaundice, breath holding spells, abnormal body movements, or admission to NICU. She did not accept breast milk for about two days after birth, following which she was initially kept on an exclusive breastfeeding till about one to two months. But then she was also occasional. She was then also started on an occasional feed of honey or sucking on a grape, etc. There is no antenatal exposure to x-rays, no history of any antepartum or postpartum complications, or developmental milestones achieved as per age, completely immunized as per national immunization schedule, no history of any maternal deprivation. The childhood history, she was born in Gochar, a village near Chamoli. There is no history of being bullied by other children or temper tantrums. There is no history of any hyperactivity, inattention, repeatedly bullying other children, stealing, lying, setting fire, nail biting, thumb sucking, bed wetting, stuttering during childhood. She would share her toys with only her brother uh, and not with other children. There is no history of any broken home, desertion by parents, step parent, or adopted sibling. There is a decreased interest of the father in the affairs of the family, as told by the mother. She started schooling from four years of age. She was shy in school and did not participate in extracurricular activities. Good scholastic performance was there and she scored well in her tests. However, she did not have many friends and mostly kept to herself. There was also excessive sensitiveness to setbacks and rebuffs. Few, if any, activities provided her pleasure. There was an invariable <laughs> preference for solitary activities and she never mingled with children even in her neighborhood. Apparent indifference to either praise or criticism was present as told by the mother that her teachers used to say that. Lack of close friends or confiding relationships. However, she would occasionally cry at home complaining to her mother of her desire to have more close friends. There was a preoccupation with her height, her weight, her complexion. She passed 10th and 12th standard with first division. In college, her preoccupation with her looks and appearance increased. She never wanted to participate in any social media activities. Uh, that is, she never wanted to create any kind of an account in any social media platform or anything. Sexual history, the patient attained puberty at 11 years of age with the start of telarchy, followed by minarchy at 12 years of age. Then puberty and growth of axillary hair at 13 to 15 years of age. No history of acts of masturbation or any consensual sexual contact are present. The LMP was 7th of December. There is uh, The menses are regular and there is no history of any dismemor. Uh, in forensic history, there is no history of any arrests. There is no history of any impending legal case. Coming to the premorbid personality, the patient was ambitious and wanted to become a doctor. Cordial relationship with family except for the father. She is hesitant and had difficulty in making new friends, does not have any long-term friends, although longing for the same is present. She is responsible towards her work and family. She would make decisions after consulting her mother. She had a flexible approach towards all aspects of life. Work and leisure, uh, there are no specific interests as told by the proband and the mother. There is invariable preference for solitary activities. The mood was stable, however, the patient was always hesitant in expressing her inner feelings of anger, frustration, and sadness, and she would often get angry over minor issues. She, uh, she would abide by the law and respect the social norms, and there was excessive sensitiveness to setbacks and rebuffs. She had a regular sleep wake cycle, and rhythmic uh, bladder and bowel habits were present. Uh, based on the scholastic, the college history, everything, the impression we could find was that there were uh, physioid traits in the personality. Now coming to the general physical examination, she's an endomorphic built female. Her body weight was 60 kgs, height was 142 centimeters, and BMI was in the range of 29.3, which is greater than normal, uh, nearing towards obesity. Identification mark, black moon, 2 into 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters from the inner corner of left eye, and a black moon, 2 into 3 centimeters, about 3 centimeters above the right eye. Uh, no pallor, icterus, clubbing, cyanosis, lymphadenopathy, edema, dehydration were present and temperature came out to be 98.2 uh, degree Fahrenheit. Blisters present on the neck, left forearm, uh, 
left arm, forearm and hand and skin peeling off of these aforementioned areas, suggestive of second degree burns. The pulse was uh, measured on the left wrist. It was the rate, rhythm, volume, they were all normal. Blood pressure, uh, it was measured in sitting position on the left arm and that was also normal. Uh, no specific findings in the systemic examination. Coming to the mental status examination, general appearance and behavior, she's an endomorphic built female, entered the room unaided, accompanied by her mother, wearing a neck brace, blisters present on the neck, forearm, uh, left arm, forearm, hand, suggestive of second degree burns. She sat on the chair provided and returned the interviewer's greeting. The patient had drooped shoulders, making her posture bent and also making her frame appear smaller. She had a dusky complexion and was wearing a pullover, an old-looking pajama with a shawl wrapped around her, uh, covering her head, shoulders, arms, and chest, appropriate as per her surroundings. Dirty nails were present and hyperpigmentation around the nail beds. Hair were properly oiled and in a single break, the clothes appeared clean. She appeared as per her stated age. She was scanning her surroundings and initially hesitant when asking questions. She appeared to be in touch with her surroundings. The eye contact was initiated as well as sustained. Her attitude, however, was evasive and the rapper was established with difficulty. Psychomotor activity was normal. Speech was normal in tone, volume, intensity, clear and coherent. It was goal-directed with a normal uh, reaction time. Coming to the attention. Uh, for attention, it was arousable and in sustained and we firstly did digit forward. She was able to do up to five places and then she was uh, unable to do uh, sorry, she was unable, she was able to do up to six places, then she was unable to do the seventh one. Digit backward, however, she was only able to do up to three places and not uh, up to four places. Then we uh, followed this up with the serial subtraction to which she was, uh, she answered 100 minus 7, 93, 93 minus 7, 84, and 84 minus 7 as 71. Then she did not want to answer thereafter. However, she repeated the months of the year in reverse. Then the patient was oriented to time, place, and person. The questions asked were, what is the day of the week? Answer, Sunday. Question, time of the day. Answer, evening. Season, answer, winter. Question, where are you currently? Answer, hospital. Question, name and city of where the hospital is located. Indresh Hospital in Dehradun. Question, who's accompanying you? My mother, Mrs. Meena. Now, memory. For recent, the question asked was, what did you eat for dinner yesterday? Uh, she answered, roti and alu. Uh, what did you eat for breakfast this morning? She answered, bread pakoda and tea. For remote, what was the name of your kingdom, uh, of your uh, school, the first school that you attended, primary Patshala in Gocha? What was your mother's maiden name? She answered, not. Then for new learning ability, we gave her four words uh, in Hindi. Uh, Kangi, Bandar, Badal, and Save. And uh, she, she was asked to repeat these words after 5, 30, 10, and 30 minutes, and she answered them correctly. Then, for higher cognitive functions, in general, fund of inform information we asked why is 26 January celebrated? Samvedhan Lagu Huatha is there. CM of Uttarakhand, I don't know. However, the CM of UP, she was able to tell. Then, in calculation, uh, verbal complex. She was able to answer correctly on 14 plus 17, 40 minus 20, 20 into 5, and 100 divided by 4. And uh, in written complex, she was able to answer correctly all except for the division part of it, which was a little, which was wrong. Coming to abstract ability, the Muhavri, uh, sorry, the proverbs that were asked to her, they were first checked with the mother if she was aware of them and the mother was. So the first one was Naach na jane aangan teda. The answer she gave was Agar dance nahi aata to mat karo. Ek anar saw bimar. She did not know the answer. Bandar kya jane adrak ka swad. She did not know the answer. Similarity is between a banana and an apple. She answered that both are fruits and they grow on trees only when given a hit. So on the basis of this, the abstract ability came out to be possible. Mood. Uh, she answered, thik, thik hai. the quality of the effect was irritable, intensity was shallow, it was fixed with a restricted range and not communicable. Uh, before coming to the thought, there is a
हेलो शिखा बताइए आप किस तकलीफ से आए हो यहाँ आंसर कोई तकलीफ नहीं है क्वेश्चन तो फिर यहाँ आए क्यों हो मम्मी पापा लेकर आए हैं क्वेश्चन क्या आपको इन दिनों कोई प्रॉब्लम हुई है या कुछ अजीब सा लग रहा है हाँ मेरे माँ बाप ही मुझे प्रॉब्लम करवा रहे हैं वो मुझे नुकसान पहुंचा रहे हैं उन्हीं की वजह से मुझे सारी प्रॉब्लम हो रही है क्या प्रॉब्लम ये लोग मेरा हार्ट ट्रांसप्लांट करवाना चाहते हैं इसलिए मुझे यहाँ लेकर आए हैं मेरा हार्ट लेकर मेरी मौसी की बेटी को देना चाहते हैं पूरी साजिश चल रही है ये मम्मी लोगों की साइड की फैमिली वाले इसमें सब इन्वॉल्व हैं लेकिन आपकी मम्मी आपके साथ ऐसा क्यों कर रही है क्योंकि मेरे ऊपर शुक्राणु का प्रभाव है हालांकि मैं इन बातों को ज्यादा मानती नहीं हूँ लेकिन मुझे यकीन है कि ये सब मुझे पसंद ही नहीं करते हैं आपको क्यों लगता है कि आपको आपकी मम्मी के साइड वाले पसंद नहीं करते क्योंकि ये सब जलते हैं मुझसे मुझ पर भगवती का भी हाथ है और मेरे अंदर भगवती आती भी है वो इसलिए ये सारी बातें मुझे भगवती ने ही बताई है क्या आपको यकीन है कि आपका हार्ट ट्रांसप्लांट करवाना चाहते हैं आपके घर वाले या ये शक भी हो सकता है देखिए मैम मुझे इन लोगों की बातें आपसे बेहतर पता है क्योंकि मैं इनके साथ रहती हूँ इनके आ, मैं इनके साथ रहती हूँ आप नहीं मुझे पक्का पता है ऐसा हो रहा है कि मुझे हॉस्पिटल लाने का क्या मतलब था और तो और डॉक्टर से बात करते समय मुझे बाहर क्यों भेजा गया ये डॉक्टर से अकेले में ऐसी क्या बात कर रहे थे मेरे खिलाफ ही होगा ऑब्वियसली तभी तो मुझे भेजा इन्होंने बाहर आप बस बार बार वही बात मत पूछो मुझे पता है और मैं आपको वही बता रही हूँ शी वॉज देन क्वेश्चन ऑन अनदर लाइन वेरिन शी वॉज वेरिन आयास अब मैं आपसे एक ऐसा सवाल पूछूंगी जो अक्सर हम सबसे पूछते हैं क्या ऐसा होता है कि जब आप अकेली होती हैं और आसपास कोई नहीं होता तब कानों में शोर या आवाजें सुनाई देती हैं हाँ आवाजें सुनाई देती हैं ये क्या टक टक जैसी कोई आवाज होती है या खुसर खुसर की आवाज होती है खुसर खुसर की आवाज होती है और साफ साफ शब्द भी सुनाई देते हैं क्या ये खुसर खुसर में शब्द सुनाई देते हैं साफ साफ हाँ बिल्कुल साफ साफ सुनाई देते हैं क्या सुनाई देता है ज्यादा कुछ नहीं बस मुझे मुझसे बात करती हैं रोज की बातें पूछते हैं मुझसे जैसे अगर मैंने खाना खाया या नहीं मैंने आज पूजा की या नहीं किसकी आवाज है ये आंसर मतलब क्या आप इनको जानते हैं जिनकी आवाजें हैं हाँ मैं जानती हूँ क्या ये आदमी की है या औरत की दोनों की है किसी आ, आ, जो बागेश्वर धाम में है स्पेशली जो बागेश्वर धाम में है उनकी आवाज आती है मुझे ये कौन है ये एक इनका YouTube चैनल है और उनको सब पता है वो मेरी सारी प्रॉब्लम्स जानते हैं और सिर्फ वो ही ठीक कर सकते हैं जब मेरी प्रॉब्लम्स मुझ पर बहुत हावी हो जाती हैं तब मेरा मन करता है मैं सब कुछ खत्म कर दू लेकिन वो धीरेन्द्र जी मुझे समझाते हैं कि ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए मैं उनसे रोज बात करती हूँ यहाँ तक की यह भी कह सकती हूँ कि हमारा प्रेम का संबंध है शादी को भी बोला है उन्होंने मुझसे क्योंकि वो मुझे अकेला नहीं छोड़ेंगे क्या आपको अभी भी सुनाई दे रही है उनकी आवाज हाँ वो मुझे अकेला नहीं छोड़ते हैं क्योंकि उन्हें पता है कि मैं उनके बिना वीक पड़ जाती हूँ हाँ ये जरूर है कि हॉस्पिटल में आवाजें कम आती हैं लेकिन ऐसा नहीं है कि बिल्कुल बंद हो गई है क्योंकि हमारा संबंध इतना गहरा है कि वो मेरे साथ हर समय रहते हैं सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस द स्ट्रीम वॉज नॉर्मल देर वॉज नो फॉर्मल थॉट डिसऑर्डर and content there was delusion of love and delusion of persecution the possession was self uh in perception auditory hallucination second and third person were present for judgment in a uh, test we asked what will you do uh, in hindi we asked what will you do in case of an earthquake she answered that i will run outside and i will ask others as well to do so then the next question that was asked was what will you do if you see a wallet lying on the road she said that i will give it to my mother social however was not intact there was rude behavior with her mother and brother in the ward personal was also not intact she was asked about her plans after discharge to which she did not reply anything and uh, she did not answer uh, and she also did not answer when asked if she would eat her medications or not following her discharge on the basis of this the uh, test judgment was intact social personal was not intact. then inside the question asked was that do you believe that the experiences that you are having are symptoms the questions were asked in hindi she said nahi mujhe koi problem nahi hai so on the basis of this the insight came out to be vague so the questions the questions i need to formulate the questions 
points of view, points of views, for which we get this. On place of the double writing, you mentioned that. Did you find any other psychopathology other than material mention of religion or love and religion of religion? Initially, sir, we were suspecting of a depressive cognition because mm -hmm. there are ideas of hopelessness and helplessness. And uh, so, but sir, she reported later on that it was due to the auditory hallucinations only that she uh, that suicidal ideation and her tent for present, you know, because it was these voices only that were focusing her to end her life. So, did you evaluate current? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Sir, uh, sir uh, presently, sir, she was reporting that there, she's still hearing those voices, but there is not as such a command. It has other hands, sir. Presently. All the previous attempts, all the command. Sir, the previous, the first attempt, sir, six months back, sir, that, sir, she did not reply properly, sir. She said, ki, me, me problems, me to bahut hobby only thi. and then ideas of helplessness and hopelessness were present. However, the mood is not incongruent. Sir. You so, through uh, history, or you ever see anything in but then, uh, sir, in the family, sir, sab hi, sir, mata aati, sir, even in the mother, aati hai, sir. Anything else which you might have noticed with your eyewitness to Sir, I I did think that when she said that, I am sir, baat kar leti hu. So I did think that there was another phenomenon of thought broadcast, but it was only with that person that she could talk with, not with any other. Just uh, if the person is being able to uh, talk with somebody who is uh, not present with uh, this group, but. When she's hearing voices, she's playing with them. She doesn't know if it's not the right way. There's an independent evaluation on the business which you want to evaluate on the local purpose, but anyway, we're not sure if it's not going to be in your case. But did you pull out obsession? Yes, sir. I didn't rule it out, but currently she was not reporting. And back then, when she was having these blasphemous. Thoughts. Even then, sir, that did not interfere with her uh, functioning. But they are present in past. Yes, then, currently, there is a risk factor which may, and there was a, a brief mention of persistent uh, body image preoccupation. Yes, yes. Uh, so, but uh, this person that she talks to, sir, he, she said that now because of his help, she is able to control her impulses and she can control his thoughts. Initially, she was this still present? No, not, no, sir. You you say, position is yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It's, it's not present, sir. The blasphemous person, is there. she prays every day and no longer so such. About social judgment, the first static is the uh, background about uh, her family. Yes. So, just in that, you can explain what you talking about. You have to evaluate other things, how she's being with you or you know, other stuff, with other, yes. other patients. Yes. Uh, that is just not related to the family. Anyway, she's family. Yes. Sir, so, can we go to her first? Diagnosis, diagnostic formulations, and the DDs, points into the names, and then post. Um, Miss uh, Shikha, a 24 year old female, first in order of two siblings, a pharmacy student belonging to a Hindu nuclear family of middle class social economic status, 
with history suggestive of psychosis in great grandmother, harmful pattern of alcohol intake in father, trans and possession in mother, pre morbidly well adjusted with uh, traits of. Uh, I'm sorry, this is schizotypal only, even back there, it was not schizotypal personality. Presented with illness of two years duration, which is insidious in onset and had a course which was continuously uh, continuous and progressively deteriorating with fluctuations as well. It was characterized by decreased social interaction, self muttering self smiling suspiciousness in two years, hearing of voices not heard by others, instances of self harm and aggressive behavior since last six months, with second degree superficial burns on the neck and left arm, on MSE delusion persecution. Uh, and love along with second and third person auditory hallucination of commentary and com commanding nature with grade one insight was present. On the following basis, she's been kept on uh, the diagnosis paranoid schizophrenia with second degree burns, persistent uh, delusional disorder with second degree burns, and a third diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder, depressive type with second degree burns. The points in favor of schizophrenia are delusions of persecution towards the parents and the delusions of presence of delusions, uh, which is of persecution and love, the hallucinatory voices, which are of command type. A significant and consistent change in the overall quality of life was also seen, which manifested as a loss of interest, aimlessness, idleness, self absorbed attitude, and the duration of illness has also been fullness, uh, fulfilled, and the effect is incongruent with the. Whereas uh, persistent delusional disorder only because uh, the duration of illness is more than three months and the delusions are clearly personal rather than being subculture, uh, subcultural and there are also depressive symptoms present in terminal. Points against? Points against? Uh, Schizoaffective only because the course has not completely always been continuous. There were fluctuations in between. Yes, she did continue that for at least three, four months without any uh, behavioral issues in that college. And also depressive type because uh, of uh, the cognitive side that we found of ideas of sex. Sir, sir, during that time, sir, suspiciousness sir, towards the parents or anything of the kind was not there. Her behavior, sir. It was odd when you ask whether she does this or not. You just need to ask her and she will be telling her how we see a normal dance from the side selling and the course you said to listen. Yes. So when you say course is progressive in maturity, so how the fluctuations are going in. I know then there it becomes a Uh, she was admitted on the 20th of December from emergency under section 89. It was treated as an MLC case. She was kept on oral medications, oral antipsychotics, and on suicidal watch. Her baseline investigations were sent and all of them were normal. Her panacea score came out to be 68 and uh, CIRATS, the auditory hallucination score, it came out to be 29. This is the CIRATS uh, AH scale. The picture is not very clear. And uh, this is the panaceas. Uh, improvement in complaints of suicidal attempts or self-harm and ideation were present. However, instances of threatening behavior towards the mother was present. Improvement in complaints of hearing voices not heard by others was also present. The patient was given six modified ECTs in the hospital. The last ECT was given on the 3rd of the January. 
and MM MMSC score on the 4th of January was 29. Uh, prognostic factors, the good prognostic factors are the female sex, the age of onset. It is considered poor if it is less than 18 years of age, then good social occupational functioning before the illness, and also that the period of untreated psychosis is small. Then the poor prognostic factors are the schizotypal traits, the positive family history in the great grandmother, father, and mother, then past history of obsessive thoughts, lack of insight in the patient, and poor treatment compliance. Uh, according to us, uh, in the management point of view, uh, like uh, in the course of hospital, she will be managed. Uh, from uh, admitted from the emergency in the hospital under section 89 she will be kept on suicidal watch her routine investigations will be sent and iv fluids will be started for fluid replenishment most likely ringal active she will be started on an antibiotic to decrease the chances of sepsis which was started the dressing of the blisters will be done she will be initially started on a second generation antipsychotic olanzapine because of a prior risk uh, initially olanzapine was started however an adequate trial was not given, so olanzapine will be started. And patient will also be started on tablet clozapine following uh, instances or due to instances of self-harm as anti-suicidal properties are present. And we did find out that it was not due to impulsivity, but actually due to the auditory hallucination. So APA guidelines says that clozapine can be started. Apart from the routine investigation sent, her metabolic profile will also be seen as the BMI is towards the higher side and the metabolic uh, profile may further derange due to the starting of these SGL. The waist circumference and the sugar levels will be monitored, and 200 mg of long-acting injectable of olanzapine will also be continued. In terms of psychotherapy, family-based psychoeducation and CBT will be done. Then following discharge, in, it will be done in three phases, acute phase, continuation phase, and a maintenance phase. In acute phase, oral antipsychotic will be continued. These are uh, according to APA, the guidelines. Oral antipsychotic will be continued for six to eight weeks. The dose may be increased if no adequate response is seen. Absolute neutrophil count will be sent according to Maudsley. Since clozapine has been started, then for the first 18 weeks, it will be sent weekly. Then subsequently, till the next one year, it will be sent uh, two weekly and then monthly. Her waist circumference will also be assessed. In continuation phase, this will be continued. The uh, dose at which response was seen, it will be continued for one year. In case of a lack of compliance, patient may also be planned for a maintenance PCT due to a prior response seen here in the hospital. And in maintenance phase, dose reduction can be done uh, over a period of two to three weeks. <clears throat>
And there was a frequency to call them. Very 
importantly, the owners for the organization. And we anticipate that they might be regardless of step in place or who are something of it. Uh, the functioning to be sure that the interpretable recovery might be needed in this context. So, with this, I would like to congratulate Dr. Kirtan. I think this is the best case of the recovery. Thank you. Thanks for the best. The evaluation of the accuracy of your book and the evidence which you took into the case of the recovery. I think you all can have a video recording of this case conference. Very good template to the right? You all have to do this. I think you can follow up with clear views of that. You all can present an idea of how to just continue in them. So you can all present your work. Now, the other version is presented all the other things. So then you are always going to be the missing to the other. So you need a lot of effort, and then you need more clarity. So, diagnosis, I will say, put the all the three of those things, all the three of those things. Then we need to find the customer, we can see the ICD value, that is very important. And also, uh, even if the diagnosis is very clear, I still encourage that for reasons. Why? Because if you force it to me, so as Dr. Mehta said, let it come from the end. Are you clear that this value of the community? I mean, this should come from the end. But no one can be a patient or a patient. But if you go to one meeting, they might question you whatever you so then they were quite you know question there. I think in that sense, we have done very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.